Hi, you're welcome to Making a Difference with Sandra Oko. Hi, you're welcome to Making a Difference with Sandra Oko. I believe there is a great giant in you waiting to be discovered and unnessed. You have within you right now. Hi, you're welcome to Making a Difference with Sandra Oko. I believe there is a great giant in you waiting to be discovered and unnessed. You have within you right now all that you need to become that change agent and the best version of you that God has made you to be. It is time to ignite you and discover your greater potential and to see the possibilities that exist within you to help you maximize your potential. Through this unique platform for mentoring, training, teaching and coaching people on how they can become better versions of themselves after being through trauma and trials in their finances, business, career, relationships, and a lot more. At Making a Difference with Sandra Oko Light Show, we leverage the power of storytelling, culture, mentorship, and value creation to help bring about the best in people in order to create a world of difference. This show requires bringing us to assessing our value system and process of recreation of a good value system to help shape our thoughts through the guests that share their story on this platform. This process opens our eyes to new strategies, information, and value perspective that will help us define and refine our value system with more clarity on our why. We need to know our why. Why am I here? What have I been called to do or to serve? To help people live with a mindset. Begin with the end in mind. And to stand up in all that we are called to do. You can join us live on Monday at 5 p.m. EST. 10 p.m. West African time. And if you have a good day, Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry. We would get through this today. We would have to go through it. We had some technical uh, uh, issues. We had some technical issues. You know, it's been raining all day in Georgia and um, we're in the EST zone. But our guest for today <laughs> is in the central time. But, you know, all is working out for our good. And God knows why we came late. Maybe for some, some people who are just joining now. Thank you for staying put. Thank you for joining. And I also want to thank you for being patient with us. And basically, I just told you what the show is all about. We bring great people, like minds like us. We, I'm in a journey of making a difference. I'm also learning. I'm in a coaching school. John Maxwell is my mentor. And I have all the mentors. Deborah Taylor is my mentor. In life, you can't go through life without having a mentor. You need someone who will guide you. And sometimes, if you try to think that everything is going to work well, you want to do it all by yourself you will fall into pitfalls. And sometimes you don't want to get into pitfalls that you're not able to get out of it. You understand? So you need people who have been ahead of you, who have gone ahead of you, who know the route and know the road better than you do to guide you, to coach you, and to see that you're a success and you don't stumble. And so today we bring people of great minds, people like who have been there, who have been through challenges, trauma in life, and who are, you know, still forging ahead, even in the midst. Because a lot of times I said, if you have a goal, if you have a reason why you live, if you understand your why, why you're on this side of the planet, even when there are challenges, even when there are troubles and <laughs> obstacles, whatever, 
you will still keep going because you know and you have the bigger picture. You know where you want to be tomorrow. You know what tomorrow holds for you. So in the midst of your failure, you will want, you would still make a difference. And so today, basically, what will bring people to talk? They come tell us about the story, what they've been through, how they went through trauma, when they had low moments, what went for them, how did they get it around? And I've said, I've said it earlier on, I said, please, you need to plug into a system. Find a group of people and friends that are like minds where you can learn, where they are better off than you. There are three things that affect a man, which is um, the resources you allow inside of you. Resources can be in the aspect of TV, in the aspect of the book you read, the social media you watch and listen to. Those are things that make you or that make or mar you. Also, the friends you hang around. What kind of friends you have? Do you have? It says, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. So a lot of times, the kind of people we hang around, we need to check them. Are they people that will move us? Are they in line with our goals? Are they people that motivate us to get better? Are they people that are disciplined? Are they people that will look up to be, in the, to be like in the next four to five years, 10 years time? If they are not, you know, gradually and seamlessly, you know, break such relationship. I'm not saying become enemies with people, but there's a stylish way. Gradually, you get busy and let them know and gradually cut them off around you. And also the environment you stay to grow. What environment do you, are you in an environment where you're being caused, where you're being looked at, at where, you know, a lot of things, you know, poisons, a lot of words are being said to you uh, that bring you down are you around such environments? I would encourage you, find an environment, a great environment, an environment that would help you grow and plug in. And that's why I said a lot of times, plug into a system. I had this time like that. I went through challenges in life. And I will tell you what helped me was the church I joined then. I don't know if you know this church, uh, Household of God, Kusokoti. Yes, it could be very funny. I joined that church. But as a teenager then, I wanted something that was lively, something I could also enjoy while serving God. But it was really a time, a shaping time for me. I learned a lot. I knew that going to school, going to college was, I didn't know it was going to be tough. Because, you know, paying my fees, paying my bills, I had to stay in, a, in the hostel. And uh, coming back home, not finding the kind of,
Hi. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So sorry, the network has also been very bad. I started by telling my story, how I went to school, how I plugged into a system. Let me just quickly wrap that up for our audience who have been online. How going to school was a bit difficult for me, coming back home and not <laughs> finding your parents, not having the, re the right resources to give you back to school. And sometimes I will have to stay back and cry and cry and cry. But because I belonged, I plugged into a system. I was committed in what I was doing in that church. My pastor and my head of department was there for me. And I'm encouraging you to plug into a system. Because sometimes you cannot undo life all by yourself. You need people. You need mentors. You need coaches. People to hold your hands. People to be there for you. People to reassure you that life can be better. And I found out that on this side of the of um, the country, continent, you find that people, when things don't go well with them, they throw in the towel, they commit suicide. Like I listened, I think um, former Miss World, USA, I was told that she jumped from the 29th story building and killed herself. What, why would anybody with the right thinking senses who is so opportune for her to be Miss World or Miss USA? I heard that she met with Denzel Washington She's so connected. Why would you think of doing such a thing? That means she's, she's affluent. She has money. She's wealthy. Yes. yes. What would even occur to her? And that's why I tell some people, I said, suicide is a spirit. And sometimes when you deal with it alone, what the devil wants to do is just to make sure you end it all. Mm -hmm. Please look out for help. Talk to people. Go out of it. It is said that when the problem is shared, it is 50% solved. So come out of your shell. Look for people to discuss it with. Tell people, because sometimes you never know who, who is there for you, who can, you know, be there to, you know, encourage you, who can be there to tell you, oh, this is how life is. This is how to go through life. When you go through this way, it'll be better. But, you know, a lot of times we want to show ourselves like macho men. We are there. We, we are so great. We, we are so good. And we don't want to talk to people. It is pride. And it is said that pride comes before a fall. So it's encouraging. Please be humble. It is said that God uh, exalts, God exalts the humble, those who are humble, those who give themselves, you know, to learning, those who see themselves that oh, I have not arrived. I still need to talk to some people. I still need help, you know. And um, so that's it. So we need to speak with people, share what problem you're going through, plug into a system, hang around the right set of people who would be there to help you. Don't open yourself to resources that will draw, drain you. Something because we have a lot of bad news all around us. And so if you keep listening to bad news, it will, you know, you'll feel discouraged. You'll feel that's all what life holds. But if we look at the other side of life, you know, see life uh, being the best, you know, expecting the best from life, life is going to be best for you. But if you see life to be difficult, tough, and not working out, that's what life is going to be for you. So I want to encourage you, see the best of everything. See the best in yourself too. See the best in all you do, and things will turn out great for you. I'm actually trying to see if I can pick out your your bow so that I can read your bow before bring on board. Just to set on, but I have to okay. restart my system. We had some kind of technical, I don't know. It wasn't just you know coming up, but I found it. So I'll be reading it. Likewise, um, that's all I have to say in a summary. Plug in the three things you need to do: the resource you allow inside of you. Watch out the resources you watch inside that you allow inside of you. Be careful. Not just everything you see around is a great material or a great resource to you know open yourself up to. So be careful what resources you open yourself to. And again, um. What people you hang around with you? Who are the people that hang around you? It is said, show me your friend, I'll tell you who you are. You understand? So you need to have the right people around you, plug into the right system, have the right environment. It is said when you have a wrong environment, when you plant any crop, it won't do well. But when you have the right environment where you are, you know, you're gingered, you're being talked well to, you are encouraged, you will do better. So likewise, um, I think that's the summary of all I have to say. Now we have a guest. I don't want to keep him waiting so that we can just go straight into the show. I'm glad you're able to make it, sir. 
I'm glad you're able to make it. Thank you. So let me just go in. Um, we have a special guest today, and his name is Anthony Finch. And before I bring him on board, I just want to read his, his, um, his bow, what he's been doing in his own. Konak Black was inspired by Anthony Finch, who was an accountant by trade, but a man that never fit into society mode of simply a bean counter. Anthony has always had an entrepreneurial spirit from owning a restaurant, oh wow, and a mortgage company. After using his wife's natural and organic products, Anthony began experimenting with formulas for facial masks and other grooming products designed for men. Awesome. <laughs> with an understanding that self-care isn't just an activity, but a mindset of self-awareness. Konak Blank was given to the world in the fall of 2020. Konak Black was created so that men wouldn't have to shy away from skincare or grooming. Konak Black exclusive men's skincare products made from research verified ingredients are specifically made to help the man look great and handsome <laughs> and confident. That's awesome. <laughs> they are not only gentle on the skin, but also helps to enhance its health, supplements, and shine. The products are all about the easiest way to pull off any gentleman's self-assurance while putting him in control of his time. This is uh, Anthony Finch's story, and we, and the next voice and the next person you get to see is, is Anthony. So Anthony will be talking to us. We'd like to know and hear from you, sir. What and what have you been doing in your world to make a difference? I know you've been through, you've done some, you know, formulations like the men's uh, skincare. We want to hear from you what maybe what I never, you know, said from your bow. You have something you want to share with us before we go into the question interview session. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, and like basically to sum up Cognac Black, it is a mindset. And what you was alluding to earlier, with the suicide and things of that nature, it's it's a mindset. So I wanted something that men can feel comfortable with. You know, oftentimes men are taught to be so hard, so firm that we don't share who we really are as individuals. So what I try to do, even outside of my product, Cognac Black, is just allow men to be themselves, be who you are, sure. embrace yourself. And, and you made a good point about show me your friends, I can show you who you are. And oftentimes, I know in my small community, we don't, men don't talk to each other, whether it be our mental health that we're dealing with, our personal health, you know, one of the things that in our community, we don't go to the doctors as often as we should because we, we, we can tough it out. So with the whole embodiment of Cognac Black, it's just for you, the man to embrace who you are, accept who you are, and take pride that you are that man, you know, and whatever, if you, like I tell people, Every each one of us different. So I try to be a good father, but I want to work to be a great father. I try to be a good brother. I want to work to be a great brother. So as long as we are striving to get better each and every day, I think that's the ultimate goal is to improve, you know, one day at a time and just accept who we are as, as individuals. Sure. That's it. You said it all, accepting yourself, who you are, and looking beyond yourself. If you know that you can help yourself, look out for help. Look for someone who can be of help. And depending on the environment you are, so that's yeah. the kind of help you get. If you're in a wrong environment, the kind of help you get will be will not be far from the environment where you are. So if you want to be in a great environment, you want to be great, plug into a great environment. Find what environment. I have uh, a friend who, who I brought in from an interview. She said she had a negative environment around her. She mm -hmm. wanted to commit suicide. She was 15. I think she had a teenage pregnancy. But she said everyone around her, her family was so negative. And all she felt like doing was, oh, I want to end it all. I want to just end life. I'm tired of all this negativity around me. And she said one thing that kept her going was that she was a prayerful person. God mm. stepped in. And today she's 71 by oh, him. Yeah. And she said she was glad she never aborted the baby. And today she said, I'm a proud mother of two grand boys, two grand guys. He said, mm -hmm. if I had aborted the girl, the girl wouldn't have stayed and leave to get married and have these two boys for me. And they are all my life. That's what she says. She said, they are the reason why I leave because she's 71. And mm -hmm. you can imagine, 
she never got married again, but at least she had a baby. Right. If she had getting rid of the baby, she would have been very, she would have been more lonely than anything else. Nobody mm -hmm. to talk to. And um, she, 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 she inspired me. She's a mentor to me because, mm -hmm. you know, she said because of that alting moment, she promised God that she was not going to alt any others because there is a saying that says alting people alt people. But she made up a mind that she was not going, never going to hurt people. As a Christian, even what if you what you've been hurt all through life, you can as well decide you want to hurt everyone that comes around you. But she made up a mind that she was going to be a blessing to others, that yeah. rather rather than you know you know pouring out the poison that others poured out to you. You you don't you 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 do something right, you do mm -hmm. something right. And she's been a great person, I'll tell you. And so that's why you know when we bring people to share their story, people learn from you. People learn, Absolutely. you know, if I'm going through this situation, what do I do? Who do I talk to? Do I, where, how do I get a mentor? How do I get a coach? And if you're on this show today, you can reach out to me or Anthony or any of the people I brought on the show to help you. A lot of times I try to leave, before you leave our show today, you probably want to drop your social media under so that people who need to follow you, who needs to, you know, reach out to you for help can often reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in today. Yes, everything was working against us, <laughs> you know, but I want to say, you, you know, I've learned, I've learned my, I've learned, I, I, I would, I would say I'm mature now. Before now, I probably would be fretty and under pressure and, you know, getting bothered. But when things like this come out, I just believe that God is in control. This yeah. is the way God wants it to be. Maybe somebody's coming in late that God wants to, you know, catch or listen to this show. Maybe that's why we're late. Mm -hmm. So I am, uh, I am so calm. And so we just go straight into the show. Basically making a difference, we bring people to tell their story. We bring yeah. people to tell their story of how they've been through life. Knowing that success is not accidental. Success is intentional. Success involves being disciplined. Success be, um, involves you being determined to go through difficult times and come through. So I want you to tell us what informed you going to college, all the trainings you've had over life. What has informed you to doing all that? Well, um, actually, it started, you know, how you said the, your mentor had a um, child early. I had my first two children um, before I was 20. And I always joked about it before I was 21. I had been married, divorced, and been to war. But I knew I wanted more. I knew I had to be a provider for my children. So mm -hmm. I went to school. Um, I started college quote unquote late. I was 24 when I first went to um, work on my undergrad in Nashville because awesome. um, I knew I needed to be a provider as the man I'm supposed to take care of my responsibility. While in school, um, getting a, a degree in accounting, I did start a restaurant, learned a lot about um, just the business. You know, you, you go through a lot of struggle. You don't know the business. I knew how to cook, but I didn't know how to run a business. Totally two different concepts. Sure. Um, it, just, it just was a struggle. But I kept going. I kept on pushing until I finally got my degree. And then um, from there, fast forward, I ended up getting married to the woman I'm married to now. But um, roughly when 14 years ago, my youngest son ended up having cancer. And wow. um, it was an experience because I grew up in the South. And, and I grew up in a time where kids are supposed to be seen, not heard. That's how I was raised when I was in the South. But um, And I share this with people. Had I followed that mindset, I wonder to this day, and I'm glad it did not happen, thank God, if I had not listened to my son, would he still be here with us? Because what happened was he came in our room one night and was like, Dad, I got a knot on my chest. And at that time, he was doing a lot of push-up. You know, he was already a skinny kid like myself. So yeah. I just chalked it up that he was getting, you know, getting his chest bigger. But not taking anything for granted, I took him to the pediatrician, come to find out, he ended up having cancer. We, the pediatrician, wow. went so did, sorry. Yeah, did an x ray, found out that he did, did a biopsy, found out he had cancer. And um, that frightened my wife and I. And for probably one of the few times in my life, I, ch I challenged God because I was like, how can you let my baby have cancer? We don't smoke, we socially drink, we, for the most part, we're good people, or we think we're good people. And now my baby is sick with cancer. But the blessing came when we went to the doctor and they confirmed that my son had cancer. He um, asked the doctor two questions. One, I was just coaching baseball. He asked the doctor, can I play baseball? And she said, based on your chemo radiation you and your uh, energy level, you can. 
And then he asked the doctor, will I die? And they said, no, you have Hopkins lymphoma, which is a very curable disease. Once he said that his grandfather was in town with us, he said, okay, granddad, let's go get some ribs. Now, when he said that, my wife and I both broke down crying because we frightened. We thinking our baby is cancer mm -hmm. and everything, and he's not taking this thing seriously. But mm -hmm. what caused me to pause was, who are we to not trust God when my son is mm -hmm. trusting God? Wow. So I ended up doing a banquet in my son's honor to tell other parents, sometimes us know-it-all adults don't know it all. And it's our children that would make us pause and give appreciation to what is really going on. And that, like you said earlier, that God's in control. That happened in February of that year. They told us, prepare to have him out of school for about another year or so while he go to these, these treatments and everything. By August of that same year, my son was cancer free. No cancer. No. no. He didn't, he did God not. God is awesome. So no. that was my journey that we, we, to this day, are very close. We talk about it and everything. But it was, it was an eye opener that sometimes our children, even though we might think we know it all, are the ones that can give us reasoning and put things really in perspective. And then after I did that, I just kept working hard, trying to make sure I provide for them with a good education. Um, I ended up doing a mortgage company um, that lasted for a while. But in 2006, 2007, when the market crashed, uh, because I don't come from a family of wealth and long relationship with lenders and banks and stuff. I had to fold my company because when the market crashed, my finances drew up. Um, and so I lost everything in that with respect to trying to run my business. So I had to go back in corporate America, which is something I did not want to do, but it was my responsibility to do. Um, and then now fast forward, I, I did that for up until 2020 that I was in different parts of corporate America working. 2020, during the summer, everybody was aware of COVID. I had started to notice that a lot of my friends in my fraternity and stuff was growing beards and stuff like that. Even at that point, I was I would do manicure and pedicures myself. I've always done that even in, in uh, college. But I noticed that they was doing beards and stuff. So and I would go get facials. I know a lot of men didn't do facial, but I would do facials and, and things of that nature. So that's how Cognac Black was born in 2020. I started to see my peers, you know, getting growing the beards, but not necessarily taking care of it. Because if you're going to have a beard, you don't want it all dry and itchy and stuff like that nature. You want to keep it nice and groomed. So that's how I ended up uh, growing Cognac Black. The name Cognac Black is because um, I like Cognac. I think it's something of quality. It's have a rich history to it. And like, and of course, you can see I'm a black man. So that's how Cognac yes. Black <laughs> about. There's something that I like to drink. And then again, I'm a black man. But it, it has been um, a struggle. It's a challenge. Because I'm not on a social media person, I'm not into Facebook, Instagram, and all that other stuff. But quote unquote, that's where the the market is, the consumer is at. So I'm still learning my way through this thing called social media, and it's it's been a personal challenge because that's that's not my one, not really my interest. But <laughs> it's not something that I ever thought I'd be doing. I probably post more on social media in the last year than I have in the last ten years. <laughs> that's it's that's where I am. No, we learn every day. I'm also not a social media person, but yeah. I learned a year ago and I knew that I have to be consistent and yes. God has helped me thus far. I've been consistent in my little, putting my little effort and just trusting everything to God. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been yeah. easy. It's been easy. All you need to do is plan it well ahead and get everything done and you can schedule all your, all your adverts. So maybe mm -hmm. this month you're going to be on vacation. You can schedule all you want to show. You can do your life or everything you want to do, your show and your flyer, whatever hard you want to put on social media. You can schedule them for one month so mm -hmm. that you don't have to be on social media all the time. Right, right. It's time consuming, I understand. And if you're not uh, social media savvy, you would be tired of doing it. You can come in today. <laughs> the next one week you are off there. No, you've got to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So what I do sometimes, I may do 10 or 20 flyers at the same time. I would okay. schedule them every day, one for every day. Okay. So it makes it easy. You're not there. It'll be playing wherever you are. You'll just know by 12 o'clock, your show is going to come live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. It'll make it easy. Well, we can talk behind the scene. Let's just push <laughs> okay. into what we're doing today. That was awesome. Mind-blowing. 
Yeah, you just said it all. You know, one of the days when we are quite young, we are not allowed to talk. Yeah. Parents only see us and just, and thank God, God gave it to you that you were able to listen to your boy. You can imagine if you had left it and you had done an home treatment, the cancer could have taken all over his body. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to the clinic or the doctor, it'll be too late for him to leave. Correct. So, and that's why sometimes as parents, we need to have a listening ear, even though we need to, you know, keep thriving. We need to work hard, but we need to have family time. Yes. Time to listen to the family, time to just ask them questions. He might not be making any sense, but once you cultivate that habit, once there's anything going on in that child's life, he or you know, she is able to open up to you. Mm -hmm. like and we do, that. We, we, yeah. we do that. We do that. We... Um, it's interesting because my son right now, he's in Antigua. He's in Antigua doing medical school. And oh, he, can you imagine? He comes back December 17th, the night of December 17th. He's already said December 18th is my, myself, my wife, his, his younger sister. Can we just go out and have family time to catch up, like you said, on everything? What she's doing, she's in college as well. What she's doing in college, what he's doing in school, what I'm doing my my uh Business, business and what your wife is doing too yeah so it so awesome. we do that we take time just for family time where we sit down no cell phone sit at dinner and we just talk about each other what we going on even we let the, the like i said his younger sister we let them have their moments where they argue back and forth but i don't like you i don't like you know you know the boy the sister brother kind of thing but it'd it be end up being a good conversation that we can really you know talk to it's each other that is so important. You cannot buy that with money. The family time is the best time you can ever have your kids. Before you know it, they're all out there in the world. They are also starting their families. Yep. So you want to have a great time with them. And this mm -hmm. is the time to build great relationships so that when they have issues with their family, they can always reach home. They can always mm -hmm. call, Daddy, how did you do this? When you yep. had issues with Mom, how did you manage her? Because if you, you're not in talking terms with them, you'll lose them to the world. Yes. You will lose them to other people. So you want to be their best friend. You want to be their companion. You want to be their mentor. First mm -hmm. of all, you want to be their role model and their mentor. So as, yes, as yes. parents, we are called to be models for our children and their mentor. We need to model what they... And you find out with these kids, they do what they see you do. They yeah. don't do what you say. And that's why I tell people, I said, an example is what to in the market than an advice. An example is more powerful than you speaking. Mm -hmm. And you're saying it because the kids of this is if you tell them sit down there, they want to do what you do. Yeah, they will find you. I say, Daddy, but I saw you doing this. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times as parents, we need to watch what we do. What you want your kids to learn is what you motor to them. Yeah. If you watch a lot of Netflix, you on TV, you drink a lot, you smoke a lot. That's what you want them to fall do. Yeah. But whatever you, if you want to read, read a lot of books, show them how to read how to be committed in reading a book and finishing up a book, they will do the same. But if they find out that you don't even read, they won't also be bothered to read because they yeah. do what you do. And even you think they're not watching, they watch they do much it. More. They do much more. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you said something? No, I said even when you think they're not watching, they are watching. Oh, my God. They are smarter than us. They, they, they're, they, in they, they're in a jet age. Everything they do is... <laughs> They know the things we never knew when we were in school. Yes, my, yes. My, my nine and 10 year old girl would do a lot of editing for me. She would go, she would show me things I don't know how to do on social media. And she's just barely 10 years old. And I'm wondering, <laughs> where did you learn all this from? Even the brothers would not be able to do it. She would teach them or show them what to do. Mm -hmm. I pay people to do editing for me then some days, some years back. But now, just within my comfort zone, my daughter would do it for me. So yeah. I don't need to give to anyone. So when we think uh, these kids are not seeing us, <laughs> they are watching a lot. They are on YouTube. They are yeah. doing things you would never do. So yeah. you need to show them the right way so that when you are not there, they can run on their own. And that's why it is said, train for child in the way you should go. When they are old, they will not the parts. Because it is old. what you show them that they will show the world out there. Mm -hmm. And you don't want anybody to say, oh, your, your dad must be a, a sick dad. Your dad is, no. You want to get comments like, oh, your dad must be a great man. He did a great thing. He showed you the way. He guided you. He showed you the things to go after. You know, you want to get to hear such compliments. Yes. I want to thank you for being there as a good and a great dad. 
We well, are all striving to be there. So I am glad that you took it in great stride. You didn't give up even when your son believed so much in God. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not, I love what you did too. You learn from your son. Some people will tell you, no, I can't learn from a child. No, he should learn from me. No. And that's why I said pride comes before a fall. A child went believing God, even when he had cancer, and you were crying for him. Mm -hmm. But when you saw the way he was taking it, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't allowing it to weigh him down. He was still very strong. You had to learn from him. Yeah. And that was a good one, that he trusted in God that he was going to be fine. And I guess that was what God needed, a faith in you. God needed you to learn from him. Yeah, and I, I did, yes. testimony. You can use him as a testimony anywhere you go to. That mm -hmm. cancer is not a dead warrant. You right, can still right. go through it and be stronger and be there for some other people there. So that's a great story. If I have someone who is going through such pain, probably call you to mentor them or talk to them or coach them. Oh, Let yes. them know that it's not the final, it's not a dead warrant. Thank no. you so much. I want us to go into all the questions. Okay. I know you've spoken about low moments. You never threw in the trowel. You went in true. So I want actually, that was the next question I went to ask you. But, you know, when you spoke, you said everything. Out. You said when you were, when you had low moments, even though you cried, but you picked up yourself and you kept, you know, going and God gave you the victory. So mm -hmm. I think you said it all. I want to also encourage our audience that when you go through low moments, it's not a time to throw in the towel. It's a time to look inward. It's a time to look for someone to talk to you, talk you out of that issue or that problem or that challenge. Or you get to see like what Anthony rightly said. He said um, what happened was that he looked at his son. His son was like a, a mirror to him to look back and trust God. So you might need to speak with someone. You might need to look inward. You might need to, you know, read your Bible, meet your pastor, your mentor, your, your destiny catalyst divine helpers that God has placed along your path to share what you're going through. Don't take it alone. Don't think you can do it all alone. It's a time to reach out to people. It is said that when you are in a well and you want to climb out from the well, how do you do it? You need someone to stretch up his hand, to pick you up from there. If you don't stretch your hand out for them to get your hand, you will be there all your life. So you must reach out for help. Reach out for help. Reach out, cry out for help if you have to. Thank you so much. And when you had great moments, how did you celebrate it? What was, you know, was a great moment for you when you had great moments? How did well, you celebrate it? Well, I'm trying uh, to to people that life is ups and down. You mm -hmm. have up and down moments. And when you have down moments, what should you do when you're in down moments? And when you have up moments, what should you do too? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the key, one of the key too is uh, when you have down moments, sometimes you have to just be still. Like yeah, I do a lot of um, meditating. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I do take time, like 20 minutes just to sit and be still and be peaceful. I remember my kids used to ask me why I sit there in the dark. Cause you know, being in corporate America can be challenges. You got, you do different bosses, yeah. personalities and all that stuff. So I used to just sit and visualize my day. And one of the things that I do tell my kids is, and you said it earlier, if you imagine your brain having 100 people in it, small individuals, if you say 50 of them are good and 50 of them are bad, whatever you start off with the day, that's what side of your brain going to win. Sure. If you wake up and say, oh, I got a bad day today. The boss is going to be on my butt. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. If you like, oh, you know what? I know my boss probably going to give me a hard time today, but I'm going to have a great day today. Sure. You know how your day end up being a good day. So for me, it's, it's all a mindset. Um, I, 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 when I do win and have my small victories, I celebrate, you know, with my family. You know, my, yeah. like I said, my son cancer situation, I threw a banquet. I wanted my adult friends to wow. come to see that my son was my inspiration. And we do a lot of that small things. We just sit down and talk. Like I said, my son coming home, it's his first semester in medical school. That's a celebration for us because wow. he's on a journey that a lot of people don't even attempt. He's attempting, yeah. and not only is he, is he on a journey with medical school, he's out the country. No family, oh. no friends. It's just wow. him going after his, his dreams and goals. So all my good and bad, I just be thankful for him. Even when bad things happen, I thank, I'm thankful for it because when I stop and pause, there's a lesson in there. 
it's for me to understand what that lesson is and how it can help me become a better person. And so when sure. I do have victories, I thank those pro problems or issues to help me have those victories. Because otherwise, like you said, it's easy to give up. It's easy to give up. And one of the things um, I preach to everybody, your competition is that person in the mirror. If you can yes, look that that's you. and say, I'm better today than I was yesterday, you won. You won. No matter what happened yesterday, if you can say I'm better today than I was yesterday, you, it's the victory. Sure. No small I'm things. I'm better today than yesterday. <laughs> huh? Yes, I'm better today yes. than I was yesterday. Because it's something you do it today that you didn't do yesterday. You put on yes. a different shirt. I put on a different hat. It's something. Oh, I had the money to buy a hat. That's a plus. Maybe wow. I didn't have it a year ago. You know, so I just tell people, be thankful for the small thing. Because if you're not thankful for the small thing, you can't have the big ones. How can you be thankful for the big ones? And then why would you be giving the big one anyway? If you can't appreciate the small things. So yeah. I just celebrate everything. Whatever happens, good or bad, I just take it and strive and say, you know what? There's something. That's, what, that's it. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Yeah, that's what they do too. Take everything in stride. Like what happened today? We were meant to be life. I was bothered, but in my own way, I was praying and said, God, this is the way you want it to run. Mm -hmm. I'm not bothered. I can't change it. I can reach Anthony. We are meant to be live. And mm -hmm. I had technical issues because I said, okay, if there were no technical issues, maybe I'll come and teach something else and coach and say something else and maybe just teach on go setting or something. And mm -hmm. whilst trying to do that, the network went off totally. Mm -hmm. I was bothered. I had to restart my system. I said, okay, let me get the system refreshed. Let me get ready for Anthony to come in. And just like I said, did, I just came in and you were ready to come in too. So I was glad and I have learned to take things easy. Mm -hmm. and so I want to encourage you. Sometimes people, we allow ourselves to get so pressured. I don't allow anything to bother me. Even when it's, you know, sometimes things will bother you. They will always come bothering you. But mm -hmm. as soon as you can, you know, look at it and say, why am I being bothered? What yep. you cannot change, don't get bothered about it. Hand it over to God. Yep, and move on. Hand it over to God. Hand it over. You don't want to bother yourself. Mm -hmm. He's there for you. And what encourages me all the time is Daniel, the Hebrew children, when uh, they were going to be thrown into the fire, they said, oh, we are not ready to take a bow. And that even if God doesn't show up for us, we won't take a bow. But they were so resolute. They believed in the God they served. And even the guys who threw them in the fire, in the furnace, God bonds. Mm -hmm. But there was a fourth man in the furnace with them. Nothing happened to them. They came out stronger and people were ready to follow their God. So whatever we do, people are watching us. We are the mirror and the book that people read. Some people will never pick a book to read. So what they are watching is what Anthony is doing, what Anthony is doing with his wife, what Anthony's son is doing in his school. And so much so, whatever you put in your children is what they're going to display. He's, an, he's out, out of the country now. You don't know what he's doing. But you are so confident that you put so much in him. You are sure that it's going to leave out so all that. And that's why as parents, we need to take time to put so much into our children prayerfully, trusting God that wherever they go, they will be the best mm -hmm. of people whenever they get there. And they will represent God well. Thank you so much. What state is your, is your son? What country? Um, and Antigua. Antigua. Oh. Yeah, Antigua. Yes. Oh my God, he's a, he must be so strong. <laughs> like, he was attempting to be <laughs> well, yeah. After he went through cancer, what what do he fear? What else again? You no, know, he's been through the I toughest. Feel, even going patient. through the treatments, and they're doing the radiation, and he's throwing up and all that stuff. So what what do he fear? And once we went over there, and you know, it's a, it's a accredited school. And saw where he's going to stay, and and felt my wife and I felt that the area was safe for him, and how they get him to the school, and and all that stuff. It is yes, no family, but we felt comfortable, and we felt he has the mental mindset that he's okay. We didn't have to worry about oh, he's on a beautiful resort island that he's going to go party and go to the beach every night and stuff like that. That didn't cross our mind because we knew. He had enough discipline to stay focused on his goal. And his goal is to yeah. get to medical school. Uh, he would come out true. He'll come out stronger and better. Oh, yes, yes. That's our prayer for him. And thank you so much. I also want to find out um, relationship-wise, have you managed friends? 
relationship because sometimes you know it is said that relationships are the sheep that will ride on to destiny mm. so if you have a wrong friend you might ride on into a you, you, you might probably drown but mm -hmm. if you have the right people you will come out stronger and better have you managed a relationship with friends good friends bad friends have you you know managed to be there and how uh, how did you you know pull up from them because sometimes it is said that when you have negative friends people who will pull you down you will try to look for a way to excuse them and leave them out mm -hmm. how well, do you manage the, the uh the biggest thing is like you said all friends are not friends yes sure. and some friends are there for a season yeah again when you start some are there for a lifetime and, and, and be still you'll see them for who they are my, yeah. my my best friend and people somewhat don't believe it my best friend is my wife we have a, a connection spiritually i think before we got married um and she's my best friend but over time even when i hit my restaurant um i started with a partner of mine when we was in school but jealousy got involved because i was the, the face of the company you know because i could get on the radio i could talk about our restaurant i could do that and i I was in Nashville, so I gravitated toward different communities that was not black community. He wasn't able to do that. So over time, it became an issue as opposed to you play your role in the business. I play my role in the business. But throughout my come 53 now years of living, I let people separate themselves from me because I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be the one. If you need me, call me. I will be for you. But sure. when I need you and you don't pick up the phone or you don't answer, you are slowly out of guilt when you're away from me. I don't have to, like you said earlier, be mean. I don't have to be revengeful. I just have to realize, okay, you just here for a reason. You're not here to necessarily together we grow. Cause I do believe yeah. um, in a unity and community. Like I grew up in, in the South where my neighborhood was a community. Everybody knew everybody. If you got in trouble, your mama, your grandmother knew before you got home, that kind of stuff. So just over the years, I try to find like-minded people. I try to find people that, especially, like I said, my time when I leave work is with my kids. My kids can tell you every last one of their parents, I mean, every last one of their friends, I know their parents. If I don't know their parents, that person is not a good friend of my son or my oh, or my daughter. So, okay. So that that's what I just try to do. I just try to lead by example and have certain i do have standards i have very high standard because like you said earlier people are looking and i don't want to be associated with people that are not doing the right thing you you, sure. you want to do what xyz that's your right that's your freedom but that doesn't mean i have to be part of it you don't and, have to no so i just i just let my friends if they are my friends either we get closer or you'll win your way out just because i keep moving you know and i, and I joke that's in awesome. business but my, I, me and my cousin have like a running joke. I keep telling her, um, I said, I'm an eagle. We all birds. But I'm yeah, an eagle. Great. You, You're the greatest of all birds. Yeah, you can be a turkey, but I'm an eagle. Yeah, so sure. You gotta be with me. You got to rise. You got to, we're going to, we're going to rock business together. We're going to go yeah. through relation together. But what I won't do, I won't stop. And no, and I would come down to your level. You're like, oh, I'm just stay here. I don't want to try it. I don't want to take no risk. That's fine. But understand, I'm every day I'm moving up. So yeah, sure. this journey with me. So that's what I do with my yeah, friends. Eagles. Yeah. yeah eagle, eagles fly. And even yeah, the crow. They don't, they don't eat even, they don't pitch with the chickens. They're no. up there and they look up they, to the they, sky. They're up there. Yeah. You know, and they keep there. going and going. You know, so that, that's what I do. You said it all. I just appreciate what you just said right now. You don't burn the bridges, but you allow people to separate themselves from yeah. you. Yes, we're friends, but you know, you know your true friends when you have issues, challenges. Yes. True mm -hmm. friends will, you know, will rise off. You know, yeah, friends that are not meant to be there, they would, you know, they'll weed off. They mm -hmm. will go back, they'll withdraw. And that's a good word. And you said it all again. You said taking time to pause. A lot of times we get so busy in what we do and we get into a repeated, we get into a closed loop such mm -hmm. that we continue to repeat the same mistake over and over. And that's why we need to take some time out, as Anthony rightly said, pause, take a stop, look inward and reflect, yeah. meditate.
find out something. Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe there are other ways you meditate. As a Christian, we meditate on God's word, the mightiness of God, what God has done in time past. If he did it in time past, he can do greater and better one for you this time around. We meditate on God's word. We take God's word and we, we chew it. What we say, we chew it. We read it over to ourselves. We say it. We verbalize it. We try to write it down. We try to leave it. And so take our time to pause. Take our time to stop and look inward. Look at the man in the mirror and talk to yourself. Yep. You know, and that's one way to get around, around life and become a super champion. I want to thank you for staying with us. And I also want to thank our audience that you're watching us. I want to thank those who waited with us. And um, I want to thank you for your patience, most especially. And also, do you have, uh, before we wrap up, I want to find out, do you have any story, any story you didn't mention, something unique, a last word you want to say to the audience, you want to leave with the audience? I, I just think the biggest thing is each individual, if you just take a moment for yourself, I think one of the challenges we have in our society, we don't have self-love. Yes. Sir. Um, like I said, my wife is my best friend of 24 years, going on yeah, 24 years. We are different people, but we are also one. We are have different personality, different ideals and stuff, but we still function marriage-wise as one. Yes, and that's that's we both love e each other, who we are as individuals, because that's what makes us function as one. So if you get to the mindset that you look in the mirror, find what's good for you. Like you said earlier about the suicide and stuff. I believe those people that go that deep to where they want to commit suicide, they don't think they're worth being loved. But I believe you have to love yourself first and others will come along. And there's yeah. something that the reason you are created, there's something about you that make you unique. Sure. When you start loving who you are, whatever the issues you have, it is what it is. But there's something something good about each and every individual. And that's why I believe you have self-love and you just pause and be thankful for what you have. And you just start seeing the world differently. You know, um, sure. I've always been, I remember when I was a kid, um, I was skinny. And people, oh, you so skinny. And it used to bother me because, you know, the guys in sports and all the jocks, nice and buff. Oh my God. I never could do that. I wasn't getting in no weight room. And mm. I just got to the point where I'm like, I am who I am. I'm, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm 195. I'm just going to be bones the rest of my life. But yeah. I embrace me. And I think people has to embrace themselves. And it's not That's that it. you're cocky. It's that you, you got to love yourself. A lot of people don't love themselves. They don't hug themselves, whatever. Or even, um, I was I, my, I have an older daughter too. And I used to tell her when I get frustrated, somebody make me mad. She's like, well, how did you do it? I said, I got to release it. I said, I'll get in my car and I'll drive. Instead of turning the radio on, I'll just scream and let it out. And once I let it out, I'm done. I ain't going to worry about what you said about me. I ain't yeah. going to no more. That negative energy is gone. We, yeah. And we have to do that. Love ourselves and don't let somebody else take your pride and joy away from you. And it's not, like I said, it's not that you're being cocky or, com or overly confident. Awesome. It's, you are a unique individual that deserves to be loved. And love starts with self first. Thank you. You said it all. Loving yourself is the word. Greatest word of all. Love yourself, love yourself. You don't see value in yourself, you cannot add value to others. If you don't love yourself, you will can't love another person. So that's why it starts with you and it all ends with you. You need to love yourself in order for you to be able to stretch out that same love and extend to others. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to see value in yourself before you add value to the world. If you yes. don't add value to yourself, you can add. It is said, what do you have to show for? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. You give what you have. You don't give what you don't have. So right, right. let's, you know, love ourselves. He said it all. Loving yourself is very important before any other thing. Self-talk, give yourself the best pep talk. Talk to yourself. You are the best of God's creature. You have been called to stand out. You've been called to be a blessing and a light. And if you keep doing that every day, you begin to act it. And you begin to act it, you, be, you become what you say. So thank you so much. I want to thank you, Mr. Anthony, for making a time. Even with all the itchies still coming out. <laughs> thank you so much. And also our, all the, our patient audience. I want to say thank you for staying put and staying with us.
I want to thank you. And if just perhaps you want to reach out to Mr. Antoni, do you want to drop your social media handle on the comment section? And if you find it difficult reaching out to Mr. Antoni Finch, you can get across to me. I would always lead you to him and I'll also give you his email address so you can reach out to him. Thank you, Mr. Antoni. I'm waiting for your social media, maybe your Facebook or just your email so that whoever wants to reach out to you can get back to you. You can email now. Yes, uh, thank you. Are you writing it on the comment session? Yes, did you see it? I, I just sent the uh, Instagram and the email. Oh, thank you. You, you. you have it? No, I'm trying to get to the comment session. Oh, you know what? I put in a I put in a private chat. So let me. Oh, so I wouldn't see. The, I could see it, but others can see it. Okay. Don't worry. I'm bringing it out to the okay. audience. Sorry, just a second. Sorry, I'm just trying to put it on the, the comment before we say bye for the day. Okay. So you can say it. It's on the YouTube. You find it. Yep. That's it. Yes. yes. So thank you so much, uh, and uh, do have a blessed evening. And audience, thank you. And if you're just joining, you can come back to watch the YouTube and the Facebook um, uh, video just to you know catch up with what um, uh, Anthony Finch has just shared with us. Mind blowing, really mind blowing. We need to learn to listen and learn from our kids. It's yeah. awesome. Thank you so much and have a blessed evening, sir. You do the same. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.